As we have already shown in previous videos, it's possible on Spark to automate any function that we find on the 16 instruments. As we've also understood, each automation can be associated independently to such and such pattern. In what follows, let's dig some more into this subject by using the kit named Simons and go more into detail about the main software window as well as the one managing the automations. The Simons kit used here owns some sounds which are very characteristic. Let's automate this thumb's pitch, for example. You need to move the potentiometer associated to the thumb on the concerned instrument. Now, let's automate its DK, that is to say, its length. Push the 18116 button here to have access to the other 8 sounds. Let's record 16 notes with this pad here. Now let's filter progressively by opening and closing the filter on this pad. However, even if we have only three control knobs for each instrument, we're not limited to controlling only three sound elements on each instrument. Under each knob on the software, we can click and see appear a full list of all the parameters that we can control. Even if an automation has been made, as here for example on the cutoff, we can select another item without losing our precedent automation. For instance, let's choose the resonance and note that the cutoff's automation continues anyway. Let's record an automation on the resonance also. The selection of the sound parameters can also be done directly on the controller. You need to keep the button pressed and to turn the control knob to see the various sound parameters in the backlit display. This also changes the display of these parameters on the software. Remember that to erase an automation, you have to press on erase and turn the knob. For example, let's erase our automation of the resonance. At the top of all the instruments are found six other control knobs. The latter don't have menus giving the possibility to change their nature. To use them, you need to select the instrument you want to work with. After, we can, on the given instrument, automate the cutoff, the resonance, the levels of the auxiliary effect 1 and 2, as long as these effects are present in the mixer section, that we'll see later. For example here, we can automate the reverb level on our thumb, but don't forget to select the thumb first. We can finally automate the pan function position and the volume of each instrument. All of these automation moves are associated only to the pattern on which we're positioned. Therefore, by selecting another pattern, we won't hear these automations. Though, by reselecting the pattern on which we've done our automations, we'll hear them again. These automations are therefore an integral part of the pattern. Now, if we want to have a deeper control of our automations, or if we wish to retouch them, you need to open the panel named Pattern by clicking on Select plus 2, which opens us the software panel associated to automations. 
We notice here that the 16 lines represent our 16 instruments. The rectangles here represent the places where our rhythms have been recorded. We can see that these rectangles writing is done in real time when we record. Now let's take an instrument on which we've done several automations and click here on the small plus. We see first the various velocity levels of each percussion hit. We can refine it if we want to. We can open this menu in which are found all the sound functions of each instrument. For example, here, we can show the pitches course recorded previously. We can edit this curve and, if we want a more accurate control, you need to press on control of the computer's keyboard during the writing with the mouse. We can, of course, write some automations directly even if we haven't recorded them previously. Let's show the DK's automations. The line tool enables to write more easily straight lines. The erase tool enables to erase some portions of the automation. The solo and mute functions are also found here on the software view and on the physical controller as well. The knob associated to each automation line enables to bypass it momentarily. The All button enables to bypass all the automation lines. Before finishing this section by the study of some elements of the main software view, let's realize that on this pattern page, at the top, we can choose various rhythmic signatures as well as an inherent resolution of the pattern. We can define the quantity of measures and steps for each pattern. On the main software page, accessible by pressing on select plus one, you find a layout of the physical controller. You got a little question mark here, which once clicked on, enables to show the shortcuts usable from the physical controller. Most of these shortcuts work with the select button. Therefore, I can have access to various software pages, for example, by pressing on select and on the various sequencer numbers associated to certain pages. We even have safety shortcuts of undo and redo here. We got a shortcut to pass from a quantified recording to a non-quantified one. Let's take an empty pattern. Let's pass to a non-quantified mode recording. Let's activate the metronome. Record something not being quite tight on the rhythm. We notice that our recording isn't quantified. Let's erase this recording. Replace this in quantified mode and re-record a similar track. We see now that even if my playing wasn't very tight, Spark automatically quantized my recording. The tempo function can also be used with the select button which enables to speed up or slow down the tempo slightly momentarily in order to synchronize the speed with an external sound source like DJs can do. As we have already seen, we can change the length of the pattern by pressing on select and by pressing on these buttons here. This is found on the pattern page. The erase button 
together with the select button, enables to make pattern copies, as we've seen. When we use the mute and solo buttons in keyboard shortcut context, still with the select button, this enables to disactivate all the mutes or all the solos used. For instance, let's throw in a pattern, press on solo for certain sounds. We can of course disactivate the solos by clicking one by one on each pad, but if we want to disactivate all the solos at once, you need to click on SELECT plus SOLO. Same thing for the MUTE function. We notice also that when we show the software face by clicking on the small question mark, we can see with one glance on what kind of filter or slicer we're positioned on.